Welcome back from lunch. We have Rhonda Nagard with us to talk about increasing productivity in big and small ways. Rhonda Nagard of Fat Dog Creatives, a design company currently based in Washington, has been passionate about creating compelling stories with design ever since she was a child, laying on the floor with her big chief tablet and chunky pencil in hand. Rhonda holds a bachelor degree in communications from Sam Houston University and a master's degree in communications from the University of the Incarnate Word, where she focused her research and passion on studying how color affects design. Excuse me, how color and design affect memory. Rhonda began her freelance design business in 2003 providing design solutions to mid-sized business, businesses and professional and trade organizations, especially for organizations in financial services, insurance, construction, and government agencies, like the National Procurement Authority of Afghanistan. For more information, please visit Rhonda's website at www.fatdogcreatives.com. Now, please give a warm welcome to Rhonda Picard. Thank you. So, I know we're all uh, full and tired from lunch, but we're going to breeze through this so quick. I hope it uh, amps you up. <laughs> all right. So, regardless of the business that you're in, you can probably relate to a little bit of disorganization. And for some of us, we can relate to a whole lot of disorganization. There are so many ideas that die in the mind and on the desk of creatives because we don't get our shit together. But we've got to get our shit together because it's only going to help us and it's going to help our clients. But there's so much to do in so little time, right? But if I were a genie, I'd wave my magic wand or do whatever genies do and give us all more hours in the day so we could get everything done that we intend to. Obviously, I'm not a genie. <laughs> but I have learned some processes that can work like magic in creating more time in your day to do more profitable tasks. So today, I'm going to share with you the processes that can benefit most levels of experience or business stage. And here's your bonus marketing tip, by the way. Use a dog or a baby or a strange accent to get people's attention. So, <laughs> this dog is my baby. This is Kirby. He's an 11-year-old golden retriever. Is he cute? <laughs> um, and so you remember who I am. <laughs> you can hum a little song by some boys who go to the beach often to help you remember. <laughs> Now my formal education is in communications. My master's research focused on the psychological and physiological effects of color on memory and cultural association. Can you turn off this microphone? Oh sure. This is up like how on top. You're you got it? Oh I maybe. I don't think it's fun to the bottom. Oh, that's a disconnect. Yeah. I see a button. Oh well, we're getting an echo. Oh, and sorry. That's why I was trying to get rid of you the know, echo. I'll set it on my ground. Yeah. I'll go on the ground. There. Is that thing that's picking up? Yeah, on my microphones. Is that better? Yeah. A little it's... bit. I do hear the echo. Sorry about that. Uh, Ooh, now we're going to be back. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Yes. Yay. <laughs> it sounds better here too. Okay. So my professional uh, experience includes working in highly regulated industries like uh, investment broker dealers, insurance agencies, property and casualty associations, healthcare, education, nonprofits, and construction design build developers. As a result, I've learned how to manage the advertising, marketing, internal communications, trainings, and websites through the compliance review process. Speaking of highly regulated industries, did you know that a, an industry is highly regulated and security heavy as banking uses WordPress websites? Thank you. <coughs> so, yay, WordPress. 
So hopefully, if you're a business owner, being a business owner, even if you're a freelancer, you're still a business owner, hopefully it challenges your confidence, your self-worth, and your skills. But, well it will, but not only did it challenge me, I didn't realize the many different ways it would challenge me, as it should. And 20 years of mastering Minecraft didn't keep me from feeling like a kid or an idiot when it came to all this business. And it is all this BS, this business stuff that keeps us, keeps us down, right? And it slows us down. And why can't we just, just focus on what we love and do that? Well, the good news is you can. You could go get a job and not deal with that, have someone else know <coughs> about all the BS, right? But then we would all lose that growth opportunity to not only identify, but to crush those challenges. So this year, in 2018, I claimed it as the year of streamlining and automating my business as much as possible. So now I can do what I love. I can make more money and have less stress. So I deliberately sought out people that embodied the traits that I wanted in my organization. And because I was focusing on my digital environment, I naturally sought out my computer genius, John Hansman, for his insider tips. And his first tip was, make your bed. <laughs> He explained that it started with how, how he organizes his day and how he starts it. So after that, that's one task done, and it sets him up for what's to come next. Then I became aware that the solutions were more about how I operate. So from John, I realized that not all the solutions are going to be in my computer. So in addition to making my bed, where else could I start? So I connected with the business advisor, Kim Thornton, who's a cognitive, uh, who specializes in cognitive reframing. I shared with her my desired outcomes. So we identified current inefficiencies in my business operations, and then we reverse engineered my year end goals into pace and measurable steps that included both business and personal uh, practices. Mapping this out for me was so awesome and so helpful that we just couldn't keep it to ourselves. So we ended up taking the first 90 days and putting it into a five-week program, and we opened it up for others to join us. And we called it the Pilot Flight Program. And we had others join us because I figured, hey, if I'm struggling with it, somebody else is too, right? <clears throat> so, and aside, not only did I meet some of my goals, I met some of them six months early. So I wasn't always known for being organized. And my brother, and I won't tell you his name, because I don't want him to share the story. <laughs> but he will tell you a story about how he had to get into my car for our commute to college as he shoved himself between books and papers and dog-related items. And it is a funny story. It's funny to hear him tell it, but it isn't funny when it's about your business. The biggest challenge for the messy, disorganized, spontaneous, creative genius is where do I start, right? How do I even know how to get organized? And what does process even mean to me and my business? So when it came to identifying where to start and how to classify tasks and projects, I saw way too many possibilities, too many overlaps, and just too much. So you can see the additional challenges that being disorganized created. But ultimately, all of these mean reduced income, stunted growth, questionable reliability and credibility, devalued and discounted work, declining leads, and little self-confidence. But you know what does increase? Your anxiety and your stress. So I figured out what my problem is. So now, how do I solve it? So more than a thousand times, I had heard, work on your process, or was asked, what's your process? But I didn't even know what that meant. Then there was something about systems, but I, I thought that meant in the computer. OK, I didn't even want to deal with the computer yet, because I wanted to know and figure out what process was. So in spite of my confusion, I devoured every piece of content I could on the subject from podcasts to books to videos, and I sought out 
and connected with creative groups, mentors, and business experts in person, online, any way I could. As a result, I purchased what's called a swipe file from a fellow designer turned business coach. Her name is Jean Quelo at Sweet Blue Bird Designs. Her swipe files included an email that outlined for her clients how she works, the steps they'll go through working with her, how to track progress, and how they'll be communicating with the project. That was my light bulb moment. There was a template right there. That was her process. So I studied it. Is mine like hers? Well, no, it's not. So how do I do this? Then I just simply, simply used her template as an outline for my own process. And that became my very first step and became my first email template. So where do I start with my clients or leads? <coughs> email, yes, that one was sparked by this swipe file. But now I can use that email template as a starting point for writing a script for myself for phone calls, another way I get more clients. That's my initial inquiry process. Now getting the disorganized organized is the first step in streamlining. Templates and outlines help create clarity, structure, and reduce redundancies. Now my work is custom, but the path to get there uses templates. But templates don't mean that it's impersonal or that it's generic. They're a place to start. So I go in and I edit what needs to be personalized by adding their name, their business, and relevant information that I might know about the project to make specific comments on it. Now, I recommend that you create a spreadsheet and outline your process. And I, I actually wish I had done started this way because it's free, it's customizable for your specific needs, and prepares you to be fully ready for the right CMS platform for you. And why do I say that? Because I got a CMS long before I knew what I needed in it. And outlining my process would have been far more effective and cost saving. <laughs> So, just start anywhere. Just get started. Create different sheets in your workbook if this is how you're going to start. And then each sheet can be your service. So on your first sheet, for me, would be branding. So that's my first service. So my first step in there, I put in column one. And then I list and link to every template that I need through my first step in my process. Column two, second step. List and link to every file or template that I have or am going to create for that process, and so on and so on. You can eventually have your entire client journey streamlined with your spreadsheets. Now, I've heard from a lot of um, business coaches and <coughs> business owners who recommend outsourcing. They say, hey, if you don't like to do it, outsource it. I didn't even know my own processes, so how on earth could I, could I even know what I needed? And if I didn't know what I needed, exactly what would I hire someone else to do for me? So, also, how do I even know if outsourcing is worth it? If I don't know how much time it takes me to do it, how do I even know if there's an ROI for doing that, right? But if I could answer that, then I'd know a rate at which it makes sense to outsource. I also don't want to be a project manager. And that's why I saw a lot of my peers, business owners, becoming because of outsourcing. And eventually, some of them packed it in and closed their businesses. So before you consider outsourcing, you need to know your process and have as much streamlined as on and automated as possible. That way, when you are ready to outsource, you will be far better prepared and have a far better use of your time and money. You and your outsource pro can be more effective and productive. Now these may seem time consuming, and they are, but in the end, they are time saving. So don't worry about the time it takes to make it perfect. You can finesse it as you go along. Good and done is better than perfect. So with your client, with your process outlined, you can create a smoother workflow that will lead to more efficiency, not just for you, but your clients. And that makes clients happy. And guess what? Happy clients tend to talk. <coughs> and clients that talk tend to send you more referrals. So your efficient workflow magically does give you more time and money in the day. Now communication is how we develop the, these client relationships. So the question is, how do your clients <coughs> want to communicate? 
So first, identify your clients. That's how you learn how to communicate with them. So if you need to better understand and intimately know your clients, you can download the Branding UX worksheet on my website. It is a valuable resource at any stage, but especially if you're looking to scale up. <coughs> for me and my clients, my thoughts went something like this. Some of my clients are fast-paced. And not only do <coughs> they not like phone calls, emails, or meetings, they don't want any further communication once, once the project is underway. No status updates or tasks. But these clients I call eagles. They see the big picture, and they leave the details for others, and they quickly just move on. And if you're not familiar with the Sandler, disc tra uh, Sandler training tape on the disc personality, it's worth a search. There you'll find four birds. There's an eagle, an owl, a dove, and a parrot. And everyone falls into the, one of those four <coughs> categories. So back to my clients. Some may not be all that organized, but now they don't have to be, because I am. I created a process specifically for this client. I eliminated any homework or forms that need to be completed because they have little or no staff. I prepared to complete as much of that stuff as possible. Of course, that requires more time on my part. Guess what? That's another opportunity. Because of this eagle, I realized I could create packages for different types of clients. So I structured services and grades to account for the client's needs scope of the project, their budget, and my time requirements. So your workbook that you have helps you identify or refresh your client profiles, and this is also available in my uh, brand new UX worksheet on my website. So packages are another way to streamline. It makes it easier for your clients to choose how they want to work with you based on their time, budget, and project needs. Now keep in mind, some clients, some clients will prefer updates at milestones. <clears throat> others will want updates in between milestones, and yet others tend to be way too communicative, which will require more structure and boundaries on your part. Now these boundaries can be outlined and enforced in the contract. But a friendlier way is to include them in your outline for each step in the process that you give them by phone, email, text, social media, meetings, however you do it. It's just a friendlier way. So then you just refer to your, your templates. You'll remind them of what's coming next, provide a little more detail than the initial overview of the process, set expectations, and then acknowledge when the steps have been completed or when the project is complete. So now you can see the benefit uh, to your business. So let's say you created two different client profiles you know how each communicates. And if you're lucky and they both prefer email, that's great. You don't have to worry about these other types for a little bit, right? But eventually you will have clients who want other communications. So you'll need to develop all those eventually, right? So you need to ask yourself, what are those milestone conversations? What are the frequent conversations? So if I start with my milestones, for me at the beginning, they, they look like this. It's the initial inquiry, which is the first conversation they have with me uh, to consider working together, right? Then there's the proposal. <coughs> then there's getting started working together, which is the client onboarding step. Then we have a review of concepts, final artwork approval, delivery of all necessary files, and then close out the project. And for all of those steps, I need an email template, a basic script for calls, an agenda for meetings. Now meetings are cool, by the way, because they're different from calls and because you can see their faces, right? And you also have the benefit of visual aids and you can, you know, you can see their expressions, you know what's working, what's not, and you can go off script if you need to, just as long as you stay focused on getting to that next step. Additionally, you can think about what phone calls, emails, meetings you have regularly or frequently. <coughs> besides the milestones. So eventually you can have your entire work day or week streamlined. And most of my in inquiries come in through email or phone call, and each type of inquiry deserves a template. So inquiries need phone, email template. Then I go down my list of milestones or frequent conversations again and have all these three for them, a phone script, an email template, a meeting agenda. In the meeting agenda, I need to ask, 
what's my desired outcome? What needs to happen next? So having one type of communication can help you write the next. So it's repurposing. So if you were in Bob Dunn's session, you know you're just repurposing. That's an efficient use of your time and your content, right? Including the business activities. Also, this can help you create a great cold call script. Now, cold calls can be really scary. But if you've got a, your own library of, of resources, they can give you the confidence you need to make them less scary and more successful. Now here's a response template based on an email or online inquiry for web, website design from me. I chose a mail merge feature in Dubsado. You can easily set this up in a word processor and mail merge data from a spreadsheet. But hey, if mail merge isn't your thing, you can simply <coughs> highlight the content type that needs to be edited. And in this case, you can see if my corner works, uh, you would highlight client first name. In my template, I have a personalized greeting because they filled in their name uh, from the form on my website. Then I acknowledge why they contacted me for website design services. Then I make a request for a call or meeting and include the agenda. Now they know exactly what we'll be discussing. I laid out the next steps, which prime them for a yes. I've included a link to book an appointment with me. Now, right now, I use both Calendly and a free Google Chrome extension called Meeting Scheduler. Why two different ones? I'm just A, B, split testing right now. I'm trying to figure out which one works best. I also use it, uh, use them both at different times to figure out is that copy effective or are they clicking on it straight from my email signature. So I use one in my signature and the other in something else. Now we all know, we've all been there, it is so frustrating to exchange 10 emails to <coughs> book one meeting. And sometimes the trying to schedule the meeting together lasts longer than the actual meeting. So we've just got to stop all this. It is not polite. I know we think it is, but it's not. It's a waste of everybody's time. So we have got to use something to make booking easier. So as I mentioned, I am using Calendly and Meeting Scheduler, both tie into Google Calendar. Now Meeting Scheduler and Assist.to, those are both free Chrome extensions for those who want to look them up. Doodle works really well for when you're scheduling meetings with five or more people. And similar scheduling services are Schedulicity, Hire Frederick, and Bookeo. Now that we can book a meeting easily and quickly, we need a platform for the virtual ones, right? So it's often easier and more convenient than meeting in person. Because in person, often everyone tries to, tries to cram around a shared screen, right? or everyone's on their own screen, but they're trying to make sure that they're seeing what you're seeing and vice versa, or you're bogging down the network, right? So nobody can get anywhere. And virtual meetings can eliminate a lot of this confusion. So keep this option in mind, even if you're within walking distance. And you know, I wasted a lot of time thinking that the only way to be personable was in person, but virtual meetings, are. You, you get to see each other's expressions, right? <coughs> Everyone gets to sit in the place of their own choosing, and both parties can save time with not having to drive or park anywhere, right? And that means there's far less disruption in your day, and the one thing we can't get enough of is time. So, for virtual meetings, I like Zoom because of its stability and flexibility. I can use it for meetings and trainings and record anything with or without faces or screen sharing. And Zoom also provides the audio file in a separate file. So I can use that for other things like podcasting or lay it over another video. And one way I use Zoom that really gives a lot of value is with my free client WordPress basics training. I host a free training for website design clients after their site has been built. Now, not everyone takes advantage of it, and that's okay. They have staff to, to make updates or they hire me to do it. However, some want more control and to be self-sufficient, right? And they're often WordPress beginners. So I let them know up front, hey, this session is going to be recorded. You can reference it later. So if I go over something and you have a question, let's save it to the end. Or just know that you can back it up. 
and they like that. So then they can save those more complex uh, questions at an, for another time and not use up their, their hour of training. Um, so I asked a friend of mine, Jacqueline Holstead of On Point Thinking here in Seattle, I said, okay, I, I use Zoom and I, I've tried Skype, what do you use? And she uses Screencastify. It's the same kind of thing. Um, you can record a video of your desktop screen, review it and share it. And um, she says she's only using the free version for now, but there is a subscription fee that at some point may be worthwhile for, visual, uh, for more in-depth visual presentations. Now, Loom offers the same thing. However, it has the added benefit of having the speaker's face, you know, a video of the speaker in the presentation while it's video on your desktop, and that's a really nice personal touch. Now, these are task and project management apps. You can put the steps of your process from your spreadsheet <coughs> into these apps, and then you can then begin to use them to keep you, your projects, and your clients on task. Now, Trello can be used in a number of ways, but the most common way I've seen it used is for project management and task management. For those of you who prefer like a daily, weekly, or monthly view without bogging down or messing up your main calendar, there's a, a power-up, they're power up those little add-ons, uh, called Calendar Power-Up in Trello. And if you want to know about how you can use Trello in your business, trelloforbusiness.com has tutorials and courses you can take. Now, Asana works well for teams and managing the team projects. Some designers I know, they do use it with, uh, with their clients to outline the project, create uh, due dates, and assign tasks to them <coughs> or with them. Um, but I find it, it works better for teams. OmniFocus is really great for managing repetitive tasks that have multiple steps. But this one is particularly uh, great for location-based tasks. My husband, for example, has a location-based task for the home improvement store. So when he goes there, he gets an alert for things that he needs to do or get while he's there. <laughs> Items can be tagged and flagged for easy organization and search. Now, don't discount creating your own spreadsheet to get started sooner rather than later to keep your overall costs low. That is totally fine. Now, Zoho has everything for business. I could list it in every category. It is good, good and used for project management. So keep these tools in mind for home and work, by the way. So when your templates are tried and true, you're ready to streamline them even more by automating them in a CRM. Dubsado is my current CRM of choice. I have my template emails, contracts, proposals, questionnaires, etc. everything loaded into it. And some, I've assigned automated tasks after the client clicks the button, right? For example, my proposals at the bottom have accept this proposal. When they click on that button, automatically Dubsado generates um, a contract to go with it and the invoice. <laughs> Now, if you're using Trello to manage other activities, you may also want to consider adding the Harvest Power-Up. You can use it for time tracking. There are several ways to automate uh, tasks, by the way, in Trello. Now, Timeular, they have a, a, a thing called Z, Z-E-I. They have this device for time tracking. I just got mine last week. It's pretty cool. <laughs> So what I've not liked about other time tracking apps is that I'm, I'm busy working, right? And then I, I quickly switch to another task, or I've got to you know, focus on email because I've got an important email about another project from another client. Instead of clicking into, lifting my hands off my keyboard and mouse and clicking around or trying to scratch something down on a piece of paper, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. This little eight-sided device that I have assigned tasks to on each side, I just work, 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 turn. Okay, email. There, I'm in my email. I, and I'm doing this because I have two screens of emails on the right. <laughs> and then when I'm done with the email, turn it over. Oh, I've got a phone call. Okay, I'm done with that phone call. Get back to work. Put it on logo design. So that, that's a really fun tool. It, it, is, it does cost, and there's a subscription fee, but it's worth it to check out. Now, my favorite, my favorite time saver is a short 
a short feature at your fingertips. It's short code, which is known as text replacement in your iPhone. And because I've set some short codes for common responses or information in my iPhone, it automatically replaces the letters that I type FDC with my full website address. So I don't have to type that anymore. I've got other short codes for things like my, my cell phone number and then one for my, my office number and my email address. And here's how it works. I just typed in on this one, I typed in FDC and then it filled in my, my URL. Pretty easy. And Android has an equivalent. You just have to do a search. Now, we've gone through all this whole process with everybody. What do you think your last email to a client to officially close the project include? What? Close, close. A five star review. Oh, somebody said it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> you want to get them when it's fresh so, and they're excited, right? You want to give them plenty of prompts and make it easy. Give them a link to it. You don't want your client to have to take time to think back and remember from long ago. If they have to think back, it's probably not going to be done. And if it does get done, it's probably not going to be as, as positive as you like it to be. So getting a five-star review is great. Getting the testimonial in that review is even better. But here they have the option to do one and done or do both. Now, as you know, Google loves Google, so if you want Google to love you, you need to show Google some love by asking your client to go to Google to give you a Google review, right? <laughs> the same is true for every other platform, from search to social media. So know where your clients are, and that's where you want the most reviews. So, leave me a five-star review, and then give yourself a five-star review for taking control of your business. Now, I put some sites and apps on this page on my website, Fat Dog Creatives. Be sure you include that s.com slash WCSEA. And that's all. You ready to get streamlined in your business? All right, do we have any questions? No, nobody wants to ask about the time. Show it on that slide again. Oh, okay. There you go. Does anyone have any questions? All right, enjoy the rest of the camp.